Hey Sharon, it's Carrie. Uh, I finally finished the chord progressions on The Crow in the Cradle. Um, it's a really cool song. Uh, the song itself is actually in a B minor tuning. I tried messing around with the DBD tuning and uh, to make it simpler I switched back into a DAD tuning. You can get that uh, B minor tuning with bar chords and such but I felt it would be a little bit easier for you because you've only been playing a short while to learn how to do that instead of mess with tunings. Uh, I know when I first started I wanted to play so bad that uh, I had to learn just one song that I really really liked so that while I was practicing I could go back to that and just play the mess out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the song all the way through slowly. The song is actually in like a 6-8 timing. You can take this down to a 3-4 timing and it still plays very nicely. But I'm going to play this slow. What I would suggest you do is download a copy of the Brown Lindley video on YouTube of The Crow in the Cradle. In this tuning it plays very nicely with their version of it and it will give you an idea of tempo and how you need to play it. Uh, for right now I'm just going to play it slow the first time through. Then what I'm going to do is go through and show you the actual placement of your fingers on the frets, how they should be placed, and the transition between each chord in it. Then what I will do is I will write down the chord progressions for you and send it to you via email. I'm going to try real hard to get a really good picture of where I'm placing my fingers on the fretboard because I'm a visual learner and that's how I learned when I first started. So let me get the camera adjusted and we'll start on, oops, hang on just a second. Okay, now this is in DAD tuning. So the song starts out thumb on the melody string on the second fret. As you can see, there's not that many chords in this song, and the nice thing about this is, is it's such a good repeat. Let me get my, I'm sorry, <laughs> I look like a hopping bean here. Once you get the, the chords down on this and you play along with the video, you're going to find it's, it's, as you practice it, you're going to get better with the timing and the emphasis on certain notes. So what I'm going to do right now is show you finger placement on this and I'm going to call out the fingers that I use and where they're placed on the fretboard. Now it starts off with I'm calling from the melody, the melody string to the middle string to the bass. So this is a two zero zero finger placement in written tab. And I'm going to take my index, middle, and ring finger and immediately go up and bar the 5. The 5 is noticeable by, by the fret dot. It's a visual marker for you to quickly find out where you're at on the fretboard. Taking my thumb on the 7th fret on the melody Sliding down to the 335, which is a C chord shape, and using the thumb again. 
I'm now doing a reverse chord, which calling from the melody string is two, three, four, ring, middle, index finger on the position. Going down to bar the first fret. Now I'm lifting my ring finger and picking an individual note. Now this is kind of an awkward chord. This is two, one, two, and I'm using my thumb, middle finger, and index. And that would be on the melody, middle, and bass chord. Going back up to the bar five. Now the thumb is playing in on this because you're going to have to utilize that middle string to get that note, that connective note, and it's thumb on the third fret, three, two, and then you're going to reverse this and you're going to use your index finger and your middle finger to get a zero, one, two, that's melody, middle, and bass. Bring the thumb up to the second fret on the melody string. Barring one. Thumb again on that middle string. Now all I did to end that song Whatever position you're in on this fretboard, okay, you've got a new octave that starts at your seventh fret, and that's got a double dot on it. So I'm just bringing this up and adding the numbers to it, and it would be, this is, this is a reverse chord. It's actually a five, five, seven, but it's reverse. So my index is on the base at seven, and my middle finger and ring finger are on the fifth fret. So you can actually use a chord to end a song. It, it's a very common practice and it sounds very pretty. Now another thing that's done in uh, playing the dulcimer, it's, it's referred to as either a bridge or an interlude. And all that is is just taking chords that are within that same parameter of key and using them to build either your own bridge or interlude in between playing a song before you play it again or actually to end it. And just for grins and giggles, I'm gonna tell you what the chord is. This is calling from the melody, middle, and bass. This is an eight, seven, eight chord. This is a six, seven, eight chord. Going right back up to that eight, 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 seven, eight. Six, seven, eight again. Or excuse me, six and a half, seven, eight. That two three five chord, even though it messed it up, your hand is actually to a point. See that middle finger there? That thing is anchored on that middle string, and that's how I play. I use my middle finger to be my pivot finger for everything on the fretboard. It gives me two fingers over on the right of that finger and two fingers on the left to utilize for anything I need to reach on the fretboard. And if you do that, you can slide that middle finger up and you've already set up and your fingers just have to follow suit and you're back at the bar five. Anyway, this was a really quick uh, demonstration. Uh, I hope it's helped. I hope I haven't confused you. By all means, feel free to uh, contact me. And if you get a chance, download Ubu because I'll be glad to sit on Ubu with you so we can play together and we can work through it together. 
again, I hope this helped and happy strumming.